good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Play Some Vidya Games. It is I, your host, Kevin. With us this week is Donnie. Hi, Donnie. What's going on? Greetings, Koobalings! There we go. And Kyle's here again. I think it's the third podcast in a row, plus we did review cast. Kyle, you've been overworked well, lately. What can I say? I need to come up with some pithy little saying, though. I don't have one of those yet. No, you'll have to work on it. And then last, but certainly not even remotely the least, we have the triumphant return of the one, the only, Coach Mo. Baby, come back. That's all I had. I didn't do anything else good. Fair enough. So as I said earlier, welcome to Play Some Video Games, the only gaming podcast so big that it now has its own expansion team. That's right, we've grown too big for our britches that we had to reach out and get some new staffers, and if you're listening to this podcast, I would hope you've visited the website as well, and you can see some articles already posted by some of the newbies, if you will, Uh, Rob, Devin, and Josh have some articles up already, so be sure to check those out, and you will see some more faces popping in very soon as they're working on their first assignments. But, let's move on to the more important things. Coach Mo, sir, what have you been up to all these months since we heard from you last? <laughs> I've been doing a lot. Um, uh, we, my football team is doing very well. Uh, we're currently undefeated. Um, we've had a very good season, so go Wolves. Uh, I know a lot of the guys listen to the show. We listen to it at school. So just giving you guys a shout-out. Um, Jonte, super proud of you. Uh, Key, super proud of you. So I'm just wanting to make sure I put some love there. Um, my gaming, ha- it took a little bit of a break uh, only because – when you're in season, um, there's a lot of film and a lot of things that have to be done so that you can kind of prepare for the team that you face. Um, and so it wasn't until about three weeks ago where my gaming picked back up. Um, and right now, I'm just going to put this down now. Uh, NBA 2K17, game of the year. Done. You don't have to play anything else. Just play NBA 2K17. It's fantastic. It is the best basketball game. It is the best uh, control-wise mechanic game. I absolutely adore it, and I, I cannot... Uh, imagine a game ever being as clean and awesome as that is. I uh, just love it to death. So that's me. Wow, big Seth, Seth would love to hear that. He's gonna be very excited that you love NBA 2K as much as he does. Um, and speaking of Seth, too, we should give a little shout out here that uh, Seth welcomed his third daughter into the world just the other day, baby Avery. So he'll be taking a little bit of a hiatus while he gets his ducks in a row, if you will. But uh, we wish them the best of luck and congratulations to them. And Kyle, what have you been up to, sir, since the last time I talked to you, which was technically like three or four days ago? But anyway, what have you been up to? Well, I think the most important question is, Coach Mo, what Michelle Branch song do you play your team to hype them up before a game? (laughs) (laughs) Um, The answer is all of them. Yes. There's not just one Michelle Branch song. That is great. All right. So to get back on the video game track, I've actually been playing quite a bit. It's been a busy, even though it's only been a week since we podcast, I've jumped into a lot of things. Uh, played quite a few hours of Mafia 3, and let me tell you, the story in that game is really compelling, the voice acting and the characters are phenomenal, everything else is pretty mediocre. Uh, the the missions are pretty <laughs> bland and straight to the point, uh, the mechanics and everything else in the game is, is not that exciting. Now, with that being said, I'm still really enjoying the game. I'm having a lot of fun with it. It reminds me, in some ways, of Mad Max that came out, I think it was last fall, that came out the same name yep. as Metal Gear Solid 5. I never got Metal Gear Solid, but I did get Mad Max. And from a gameplay and just fun perspective, I love playing Mad Max, but I didn't really care about the story at all. This game is sure. like the inverse of that, is that the gameplay and things like that are, are fine, but I really enjoy the story. So I'm willing to go through all the gameplay loop and all that stuff to get to more of the story beats. So, mm. um, you know, for most people, I think, I think if most people spent $60 on this title, they would be disappointed by it. But overall, I, like I said, I, I think that they're doing some cool stuff. There's just some, if you want to go online and, and have a good time looking on YouTube at some of the bug clips that there are out there. I was about to ask you, have you had any glitches I yet? I have not had anything <laughs> too bad. I've had a couple um, things. I've had a couple bodies fall where then like their um, their back like <laughs> bends completely in half. So their feet are up by their head. So I've had that happen <laughs> to a couple people. But, I mean, the the biggest quote-unquote glitch, and it really isn't even much of a glitch, but just the AI in that game is just really dumb sometimes where I can nah. run up and, like, get a stealth kill and, like, just run up and just stab people. Like, everyone sees me doing it, and I just run from person to person and just stab them. That sounds and I, awful. I've just 
stabbed like all of the like i will run through entire warehouses and just stab people and i want i want to take that sound clip out and just leave it alone by itself wow that's <laughs> a good wearing one. my clown mask i won't know uh, no no clowns i saw a vine um where apparently there's like a a, a car chase scene and the guy turns to the left. He screams around this corner. He almost has the guy, and then the car literally just this dives is... into the road and disappears. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh and he God. like and, and he's got like a he's got a webcam, and he just looks into the webcam like, what just happened? Like, well, and he like he just replays it over and over again. I think my favorite one is somebody's in a boat, and this was from one of the bigger sites, or from somebody from one of the bigger sites, GameSpot or IGN or something. And they are in a boat, and they turn their boat, and when they turn it, they go right over the top of another boat and that causes that boat to start like corkscrewing and eventually it like shoots up into the sky and then like 10 seconds later comes crashing down right on top of their boat and kills them like it's pretty it's pretty epic so there's some crazy stuff i haven't had anything too crazy but i still like i said i think it's worth a play maybe not at 60 dollars if you can get a good black friday deal i will say like i said the characters the story really really compelling i really like where they're going with it it's some as far as a story goes really interesting i almost wish this had just been a linear game more of your you know uncharted style even more of like a tomb raider style just very much more linear and i think this game would have done much better because the characters and the story are great uh it's just unfortunately the gameplay isn't too wonderful uh speaking of tomb raider though i also jumped in rise of the tomb raider and i was really excited to play this game it was my easily my most anticipated game of this fall. Um, I was a bit bummed that Xbox got the year of exclusivity with it, but I because I really enjoyed the reboot a lot. That was my one of my favorite games of the year that came out. I played it on um, actually 360 back in the day, and then I also replayed it on PS4 because I liked the game that much. Uh, this game might be a little bit of a victim of hype. Uh, it's good. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm not having a great time with it. I don't think I liked it as much. I don't think I like it as much as I liked the reboot. Uh, and I don't really know why right now. And I think part of it is I'm just not that compelled by the story and not that I was super compelled by the story in the first one, but I, right. I think maybe with just playing, you know, coming off of all the uncharted now playing mafia that has a phenomenal story that I'm really engaged in. I was really excited for this one to have great gameplay and a good story. And the gameplay is pretty solid, but the story is just, it's just not grabbing me. It's just not doing what I want it to do. So I'm still having a lot of fun. Um, I'm still. It still has pulled me away from Mafia. I'm definitely going to finish this before I jump back into Mafia Three. But that's something that you and I can agree on. I was actually I've interested to hear yet? you compare it to Uncharted because um, I also played it after Uncharted and was not as into it and just kind of gave up on it. Right. I did kill a bear already, Mo. Um, so okay, I am that. I, Go ahead, sir. That's where it starts to get. That's where it starts to get really good. Is like after that, like there's all that lead up to that uh, encounter. Yep. And after that's when the story and stuff really dives in, and you learn about the characters and stuff. Yep. It gets really. It gets way better after that. I just want to make sure I point that. Yeah, out. I'm at. That's when you. That's when you get into the warehouse and you start stabbing lots of bears all over <laughs> right. the place. Stabbing all these bears. Uh, I am according <laughs> to the th- counter. I'm 34 percent done. Um, I am past the Soviet installation to not be big on spoilers. I'm to the next part after that. Uh, mm-hmm. And like I said, it's good. It's just not, I would, uh, and maybe it's even close to great, but there definitely is. And I think this is the biggest reason. And I think they're different games, but you know, people are always like, oh, compared to Uncharted, what is this like? And I think there's just a clear difference in polish level between the two. Oh, sure. Um, Uncharted is just so smooth and like some of the animations and stuff in Tomb Raider just don't look as good. But I think that's part of, you know, Uncharted 4 being the most expensive game Sony ever made. Uh, so it's hard, you know, it's it's not comparing apples to oranges, but it, it is hard going from that and, and having these two um, games that are just so, that play off of each other so well. So like that, like I said, still really enjoying it. Think it's really, really good. Definitely worth the play. Definitely easily worth the money. Um, like I said, it might have been a vi- bit of a victim of its own hype. I don't necessarily know what it could have done to live up to its expectations. So it might be as much my fault as anything else. Um, still trying to plug my way through the game Zenith, uh, which is a review <laughs> assignment for me. Uh, this is going to be a really good review when it's done. It's just that with everything else that I've been playing, it's been tough to put the other things aside to play this game. But I, I am going to get this right. done because um, I will definitely have things to say about it. Uh, uh, mobile gaming, just a little bit. No, I shouldn't say mobile. Handheld gaming, just a little bit. I was I actually jumped into Thomas Was Alone. I've had it on my Vita forever, just never played it. Um, so it was just sitting in my bed one night, couldn't sleep, so I, I booted that guy up. And that's a nice little fun little game. I'm enjoying myself there. 
Um, and then I won't jump too much into, but I did get my PSVR, and I have played a boatload of VR games, but pretty much only Yay. the demos, um, because I wanted to get through mm-hmm. as many experiences as I could before we podcasted tonight. So I've pretty much just been busting through that demo disc. Um, I've played some Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. I played Thumper, Super Hypercube, Headmaster, E Valkyrie, Job Simulator, and Res Infinite. Uh, and they're all pretty good. Uh, they're not over too bad. I have some issues that we can talk about later with some of them, but overall, I'm enjoying the mm-hmm. experience. Uh, but like I said, I've talked a lot about other games, and I know that's our main topic. So I will just kind of leave it there. So that's where I have been at in the last week or so. Ooh, Kyle with the tease for the main topic. All right then, Donnie, we're up to you. What have you been? What have you been up to, and what have you been playing? I haven't played as much as I'd like to report. Um, I was all in Forza Horizon Three, just constantly driving around, and I still am. I absolutely love the game, but uh, you may have heard Hurricane Matthew happened. <laughs> And just a little bit. Uh, yeah, if you heard about that, <laughs> um, it kind of really kind of kept me busy for about five or six days. I was either working at the office real late into the evening or even overnight for one night. So I was kind of strapped to my 3DS. I did beat Box Box Boy. Um, I've talked about it on the podcast several shows mm-hmm. over the course of the summer. It's Box Boy. It's more Box Boy. It's got a little bit of color. It's got a cool little tandem thing, but it's just Box Boy. I still think you, if you have a 3DS, you should absolutely buy both of them. It's 10 bucks for both of them. It's a ton of game for that amount of money. I um, really enjoyed it, so I've beaten both of those. I played Metroid Blast Ball, which is something that I played a crap ton of and was really into it, and then when the game came out, I kind of never went back to it, and then as more games came out, I never went back to it. But while I was chained to my desk at the office, I did boot that up and still really like it. So uh, I got into that, and then as the week kind of winded down and I was able to get home, I was able to finally boot up Gears 4, and I haven't got very far. I only got through Act 1. Um, but so far I'm really enjoying it. It's gears. It's just gears. That's the best way I could put it. I mean, it's, it's gears and (laughs) you know, it's, it's exactly what you would expect gears to be on a next gen console. I like, you know, one thing that I would say that I really enjoy about this gears is the new characters. They fit in really well, at least for me, I took to them almost immediately. I was like, all right, so these are the new squad. I enjoy them. Um, there's kind of uh, I was listening to Podcast Unlocked, and there's kind of like a Star Wars thing to it. That's what kind of the, how he describes it, the new Star Wars episode, and kind of like there's new characters, but they have like this loose tie-in. It's very similar, uh, so that's a really good analogy. Um, it's colorful. Like, they, ab- they absolutely add some color to the universe, which, you know, you guys know me. I'm all about, you know, getting some aesthetic as- appeal. So um, first act of Gears 1 in the books and uh, I'm looking forward to beating the game hopefully by the next time we podcast and that's it nice alright then it's my turn um, let's see first uh, yesterday was it yesterday the day before I uh, finally put to bed Kirby Planet Robobot uh, played through that uh, overall a good experience nothing earth shattering or groundbreaking as far as 3DS games are concerned but a very once again solid delivery by nintendo it's what you'd expect out of a kirby game with the little extra twists with the mech which is quite fun not terribly hard so i think pretty much anybody could beat the game uh until you get to the end boss which was a little frustrating because it was if you're a fan of old school games you might remember this uh trope being used quite often where it was like hey you fight the final boss and you think the game's done oh wait no there's another boss and then another version of the boss and then the boss's brother, and they just keep throwing like boss, boss fight rush after boss mode, fight you after. just do all the bosses. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, but it wasn't even, and I know Kirby's done in the past where it is boss rush mode where it's the same bosses. They did that a little bit earlier in the stage, but when you get to the final boss, even that has like six different iterations of the boss fight, and it's very weird because the game isn't hard, but then you get to the end and it kind of ramps up and caught me off guard a little bit. Um you know, so you fight all these boss things, and they never give you anything to refill your life gauge and stuff like that. So it can be a little bit rage inducing, but I, I did complete it, so it was fun. It was definitely Black worth the play. List. As soon yeah, as I it, can get it for less yeah. than twenty five dollars, I want to pull the trigger. Is that is that where you? Put yeah, that? that's that's one hundred percent fair. If you paid thirty five for it, I would have been a little upset. But any anything under thirty, I would say actually, yeah, twenty five is probably around the sweet spot. Um, it's definitely worth playing 100%. It's just not, uh, it's not what I put in the upper stratosphere of 3DS games. So, uh, review will come shortly, probably next week. Um, as of right now, I'd probably put it like an 80, 82. So it's definitely worth playing. It's just not super great. Um, uh, still clicking away at, uh, Uncharted 4. Um, I voiced my 
aggravations with that with you guys offline on the chat, but uh, turned a little bit for the wish, better if, last If I night. remember correctly, you wish there was yeah. more climbing. That... <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know if it's just because I haven't played the originals since I played the originals. I never went and revisited them on the remaster or anything like that. I just don't remember this much climbing. So we, and, we and talked about it a little story. bit. I'm yeah. most interested because it's not the amount of climbing that bothered me most. It was like the auto climbing. Like climbing is yeah. kind of boring because in the old games, like you had to press X to get to the next cliff to get to the next spot. Right. There was more yeah. of like a movement to it. Now it's just kind of like hold stick to climb. And you just kind of sit there and hold your stick for minutes at a time. So I'm interested to see that like, it's not the climbing itself that you're upset about. It's just the amount of time that you're climbing. Yeah, it's you can still press X and he'll leap and it goes a little bit quicker. But I just find myself, instead of enjoying the game as much as I did the other ones where you're kind of just going through the story, it was just like, all right, here's the climbing part. I'm going to mash X as fast as I can to get through this, to shoot like three or four guys and then have to climb again for like five minutes. And, and just that was just, it It kept taking me out of the experience. I'd have fun and then it would pull me out because I had to climb for 10 minutes and it was just kind of dull. But I did reach a certain point in the game, which... To be fair, the game seems much, much better now at this point. They kind of threw some plot twists at you, and yeah. the story actually got interesting. And I will say that my opinions on his brothers, he's still a douchebag and just even He's more coming so around, now, Kyle. He's coming around. He's, he's, getting, he's trying not to, yeah, but he's, he's coming there. around. He's getting there. Yeah, he's I, getting there. I, I might bump my 80 to an 85 on this now oh. at this point. We'll see how the, we'll see how the end goes. It's still not the best Uncharted How is to Kirby me Planet so Robobot in 82 <laughs> and Uncharted 4 in 80? Like, is that, is, how is that possible? These games do not even come close to comparison. What you Kirby say? delivers. I feel exactly like you're being hard on it no, 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 for no, no, what no. it isn't. So what he's saying? No, 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 is listen. Jazz Punk is the better game. Yes, yes. That is completely I, I would, wrong. I would. That's <laughs> not even possible. I would easily say that. Uh, well, anyway, this is so, why uh, reviews are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's all opinions. But either way, it, it's it is getting better. So I'll admit that I'm having more fun with it where it is right now than. The, the beginning of it the problem is though so yes i'm very happy it's much better now in my opinion but the thing is i shouldn't be more than halfway through a game for it to hook me that's that's an issue i think in execution in my mind because most gamers if they were like me or like minded like me i'm not saying this is for everybody because clearly the game is beloved um it shouldn't take you more than halfway through to get hooked because most people just give up at this point. I've played every Uncharted, so I want to see how this story ends. So regardless, the game could have been god-awful, and I'm still going to beat it because I want to know how this story ends. But it shouldn't take more than half a game to hook me in. But it is, it's is—it's got me hooked. Now I'm enjoying it. I so. can appreciate that. I feel the same way about Twilight Princess and Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. I, that, I think that's perfectly fair, and that, maybe that's why I never played so much of Red Dead Redemption. I did play Twilight Princess, but you're right; I agree with that 100. It didn't it didn't hook me for a long time, but when it did, it got me good. But uh, so the only other game I've been playing recently then is Paper Mario Color Splash. So last week's pod, I did mention it came in, and I only played a little bit of mm. like an hour. Um, played more than that now. Um, the last couple of nights, I haven't gotten around to it to be honest, but um, really enjoying it. The writing once again is top notch. Like. If you're a fan of the Paper Mario series and kind of, I think for the most part, everyone's favorite was Thousand Year Door, uh, the writing is on par with that, if not better. It's it's a very funny, witty game uh, that continues that method. Um, really nothing bad to say about it. The graphics are cool. The innovative uses they have for the paper and the cardboard and the paint are, is, is, is fun. I enjoy it. Um, the only minor thing that's kind of annoying me a little bit is the card battling. At first, it really didn't bother me, but then you either end up with a ton of cards that don't do you any good at all, or you end up with no cards whatsoever. And then the battles get a little bit frustrating because you can only pick up cards from uh, enemies, uh, certain parts of the environment you can interact with. Um, and then you can buy them at the shop, but the shop so far, at least, and I'm a good three, four now, nah, probably seven or eight hours into the game. There is one location you can buy cards from. So you have to kind of backtrack a long way to get, more cards if you're in a, if you're in a pinch. So that part's a little annoying, but it doesn't doesn't take away from the game so far. I'm loving it. I have questions. It's so far up there with a uh, thousand year door. Yeah, go ahead. Right I have questions. I've been wanting. I've been waiting. I've given you time. Yeah, and absolutely. now I have questions. So first question is this is this game the prettiest Wii U game to date? No. Okay. Because it looks like it from YouTube and stuff. It, it looks like it would it, just be amazing on an HD TV. It looks fantastic. I will give it that. But because of it being paper and cardboard and 
fake paint. It's not even like supposed to look like realistic paint. It looks great, but it looks what it's supposed to be is very kind of 2D with sometimes a 3D element. But if you hold it up to like, oh gee, I think even now I would still say the same thing. I think Pikmin 3 is the best looking game as far as the environments and everything and, and the atmosphere. It doesn't come anywhere close to that. It's not bad by any means, but it's not the best. No. Okay. Uh, next question. I heard several podcasts and read a lot of reviews because as much as I said I wanted to play it, I kind of looked at mm-hmm. the calendar and I'm not going to get to it. It's right. going to be Black Friday, probably Christmas for me. And sure. my next question is a lot of the reactions that I read so far seem to think like the boss battles were almost like gates. They were. I kept hearing a similar thing where if you don't have a specific card to play for each boss like you just can't beat them is that do you have you encountered that that's not true at least not so far in my case it if you have the right cards it makes it substantially easier but it's by no means impossible to win if you don't have the right card okay they they made it sound like it was impossible like if you don't have the card you can't advance so you have to go get the card to advance no, and honestly, what the game does, it does have a mechanic if you're out of cards or you don't have a card you want to use, per se. So, like, let's say you're only left with cards to give you back health. There is a feature in the game when you get to a certain level that you can spin a roulette wheel, if you will, and get an extra card. It costs you some coins out of your pocket, but it's nothing major. And then you can spend more coins to see which card you're trying to stop on. And then the third one is you actually narrow down and you only can get from, like, good cards. So there are ways to make it you get get what you need. The only times that stuff stops you from going forward if you don't have the right card is there are certain points in the game where I don't want to give anything away, but this, so this won't give anything away, but there are certain cards that will interact with the environments. They're not used in a battle per se. They just help something is this like the, happen to help you move along. Is this the like the lemon card? Like where the, the real life yes. objects? Okay. Yeah, there's I've real been, life I, objects. That's what those, I've been those heard, cards. that if you don't have yeah. those cards, you cannot advance. Correct, but to be honest, a lot of times you get them on your way to wherever you would need them, and if you don't have it, um, they can pop up in the roulette wheel, so you can always go that route, or there is a place in the main town at the beginning of the game, which is the same place as the card shop, where you can get the real-life cards, which are the overpowered cards, if you will, that you can have on hand. So you can still get them and purchase them. It's not like, oh my god, I have to go through 12 levels. The map... Um, works very much like a Super Mario World where you beat a stage and then you actually advance to the next circle and that's the next level. So it's okay. not like you're actually backtracking per se. Um, and if you've played a level and you need to go back to get additional items or things, you can quick exit out of that. So it's not like you have to go okay. through the whole level each and every time. So because it's like I said, it's not it's it makes it easier if you have the card, but it's not impossible though. No. That doesn't sound extremely friendly if I wanted to buy the game and let my kids lose in it. Like while while I may not have time like, I could see if I could get it on Black Friday, I could totally give it to my kids and they could play because they're not playing Gears or Forza. I right, am. sure. Um, but that whole, if you don't have this, you can't move forward, seems to be like something a five-year-old would get caught up on. Because I'm afraid, like, he's going to play yeah. the card as soon as he gets it. Um, your, your, son, your son, no, but your daughter, I think, should be okay with it. Okay. Uh, my last question is, how is the adventuring inside the levels themselves? Like, are there hidden items and hidden areas or things to discover? Oh, yes. Or is it very Absolutely. linear? No, it, it's linear in the point that you beat the stage by getting from point A to point B, but throughout that there's multiple routes, multiple things to collect and unlock, um, as well as cards and hidden interactions and almost side quests, if you will. Not in the traditional like Witcher or Fallout sense where it's like, you know, you're given an objective, but you might inter- interact with a certain character that will be like, hey, if you can really help me out and do X, Y, and Z, then I'll help you out doing this and that. Um, so there are things you can do that you can certainly overlook and go and complete the stage without doing so. And you have to do a little bit of backtracking later on when you're like, oh, maybe I should have helped that person because that'll help me later on. And so there's some of that where it has a high replayability for each stage because you can't, you literally cannot collect everything in one run through, even if you know what you're doing. Um, because when you collect certain things in the game, your objective is to find paint stars. There are multiple paint stars in each level. So if you think Super Mario, like uh, 64, where there are multiple stars in each level, but once you collected one, that level would end. Okay. And you could advance to the next one. But if you needed more stars, you had to go back. It's the same mentality there. Um, but there are hidden inside things throughout the, the game as well. Okay. Now that I've successfully put the other two to sleep, I return the floor back to you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it for that. So, so far, I'm loving it. Um, my wife, ironically enough, is playing it as well, and she actually dug into it a lot quicker than I did. 
uh, and, and got well ahead of me, but then kind of got stuck and was like, I'm going to wait for you to get to this point and see if you can figure it out so I'll know what to do. So we've kind of been going back and forth and playing so we're not too far ahead of each other at any point so we can we can help the other one if they get stuck so it's uh definitely a great recommendation for i know we've had quite a few people ask for like couples games while this isn't two player per se um it's definitely entertaining enough that somebody can watch this game and not be bored i think so uh it'd, it'd be a fun couples game for sure but that's it for me so um that's enough from all of us then so it's time to move on and hear from you all at home and check out our messages message for you, sir. Our first message comes from Paul at pcalico84 on Twitter. He wrote in just to say Clash of Clans is also an excellent poop life game as well. Uh, we discussed this on last week's podcast. People were asking what games are we playing on the toilet, if you will. Um, so ironically enough, with that discussion, Coach Mo said, hey, we should have a clan on Clash of Clans, so he went ahead and started the PSVG clan on Clash of Clans, so if you play the game, or even if you don't want to play with us, by all means, download the game, it's on iOS and Android and Windows, I believe, even, so join up and then join the PSVG clan uh, to play along with us. Coach Mo, uh, so what is Clash yeah. of Clans? Nothing. Um, Clash of Clans is your basic strategy defense, you build a base and go attack people, but your base really only changes as you uh, upgrade it. Again, free-to-play game, supposedly, but I've realized <laughs> that if you don't spend money, you can't actually get all the like really high-end stuff if, unless you found some way to cheat the system. Uh, what I do is I basically go lose a bunch of matches in a row to drop really far down in the ranks, and then those people try to attack me and they can't, and that's how I stop Power Gold. Uh, which you used to upgrade. That sounds but. amazing. That just sounds <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> it's it's really it's really tedious. But instead, like I right now have spent, uh, I think I've spent ten dollars total in Clash of Clans, and I've been playing it for like five years. Um, but I wow. did it just because I had to get that level eleven thing. So I bought enough gems to buy enough whatever to get the level eleven town home or town hall, and so. <laughs> Just because I was like, I am not willing to save 10 million gold. It's just not going to happen anytime soon. So. <laughs> no, it is fun. I, I've played it on and off a few times, so I just re-downloaded it and it asked me if I wanted to resume my save file. I was like, no, nah, I want to start over, so I'll be joining the clan shortly as soon as I hit that level where I can. Uh, but I know a couple of us have already signed up, so yep. feel free to join us and uh, play the game and look for uh, PSVG when you can join uh, your clans and play along with us. So we'll move on to our first question of the game. And uh, Ace13, a.k.a. Sick underscore Parvis Manga on Twitter. Uh, just Ace. Just Ace. Just Ace? So I gotta, okay. Well, I gotta it said it. Ace13, so I'm with that. Okay. Just Ace. Uh, just Ace wants to know, <laughs> which video game character do you most relate to? We'll start with that one. Or see yourself as. And then he has a second part, but we'll get to that after. So which video game character do you most relate to slash see yourself in? Let's throw it to Coach Mo first. What is your answer, sir? Winston from Overwatch. Mm. And why? Um, giant hulking body. Decent head on the <laughs> shoulders. Uh, <laughs> wants nothing else than to be surrounded by friends and family. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. Kind of fits me pretty good. Fair enough. Uh, Kyle, what about you, sir? So this is actually a really hard question, and I thought it was going to be simple, but then Donnie talked to us before the podcast, and now I'm having an existential, existential crisis. It's a terrible question. <laughs> um, so oh. it's not a terrible question. I'm going to go with uh, the kid from Bastion, just because, you know, kind of wandering through life, not always sure exactly what's going on, but still making his way forward. Wow. I like it. Like wow, that's, that sounds that's like a, something that's a deep answer. That sounds it. like something you write in somebody's high school yearbook. <laughs> you know, Donnie, I'm really glad Mo's here. At least he makes me feel good about myself. Well, you're gonna you're... like my answer because my answer no. is Zeke Dunbar, the infamous From companion infamous? and infamous. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, that is my oh. video game spirit animal. He is uh, a loyal friend, a smart ass. But loyal. And uh, that fits me just fine. <laughs> so, yeah, your your initial answer had me raise an eyebrow. But then when you explain it, I get where you're coming from. So I, I can understand. And mine is along the same lines. Although not as, I think, overall kind of... Mm, I don't want to say hated character. But he's much, much more beloved. And that is the one, the only Nathan Drake 
And it's not because I'm hunting pirates and getting treasures and stuff like that. It's because I find myself amusing and witty, and I too can be a smart ass. I don't support so. this answer at all. He's way better looking than you. <laughs> I didn't say I look I, like him. I disagree. Kevin's very attractive. Uh, did you see his high school volleyball <laughs> I did. photo? I do you, sure do did. You We're think, not talking about that. Do you think Nathan Drake played high school volleyball? For the ladies, yes. <laughs> God. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. So let's let's move along. Um, so the second part of Ace's question is, what is our favorite video game gadget and or weapon? So let's go back around to Coach Mo. What is your answer, sir? Diva's Mac, also from Overwatch. Ah. On the Overwatch kick, why is that? Um, because when we were when I was thinking about this, uh, I I liked, I wanted to think of a relevant character like someone people would would know because a lot of times I go like older characters maybe not everybody does, but if if there's ever something I wanted, it was Diva's Mech because you can like summon it and pop in and out, and it's got a shield mm-hmm. and a good gun. Uh, I I have a feeling with all the things that are going on in the world, having a mech would be very helpful. <laughs> Fair I, enough. I would dare the clowns uh, to show up on my campus. Oh, gee. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> Again with the clowns. Bring in the clowns. <laughs> Kyle, then, what is your answer, sir? Well, you know, this is... Man, Mo talking about Overwatch, the last two answers has really made me start thinking about Overwatch again. And I played a little of this last weekend. I didn't include it in my update, but man, that's such a good game. Uh, so then I started thinking of Overwatch things. But I'm going to actually go with, uh, Does anybody? if I say the word Scarborough Fair, does anybody know what I'm talking about? No. Those are No, but Scarborough Beach is in Rhode <laughs> Island, so no, I know that. I'm going to go with Scarborough <laughs> Fair. That is actually the name of Bayonetta's guns. In the first Bayonetta. Oh. Uh, and specifically, though, the one she has on her feet. Because guns in your hands, those are fine. But guns on your feet. Oh, 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 oh. That's, that's a good hold answer, on, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Kyle, you want high heel guns? Dude, those are sweet. Those are total. Yeah, they're, but they're, they're, I'm going to agree but with But they're Kyle. high heels. Those are pretty awesome. Yeah, those are actually. But they're high heels. Yeah, but they are amazing. As far as cool things that I want to play with in a game, that's awesome. Can we All right, here's the thing. You could you could have went with. That's fine. What was that? Maybe he just <laughs> wants a girlfriend that has those heels, guys. Why are you? I was about to say, I'm like, you could have gone with like the Batmobile. The high heels you are better. You could have gone with like the portal gun. The high heels are you better. You went with high heels with a hidden gun in it. Yeah, I mean, I was going to yeah, say Lucio Sound Blaster, but you know, I now have switched. I I'm going to go with Bayonetta's high heel guns because those things are sweet. Dude, if the high heels come with Bayonetta, I support this answer 100%. <laughs> I'm just saying. I thought about using her hair as an answer for that this, to be honest with you. That would be a good one, you. too, actually. Yeah, like, those high heels are pretty sweet. Like, in Smash? Come on, guys. Um, I'm scared. I went, God, Donnie, what's your answer? So I, I, I'm i torn between a couple. So I went with Cerebro Boar from Turok. You guys ever sure. use that gun? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. The Lancer from Gears. I mean, that one's just, that's Gears. It's oh. just Gears. It's so good as a uh, as a, an assault rifle, as a chainsaw on it. That's, that's America. <laughs> it's like some good I stuff going on. And then the, uh, the three red turtle shells from Mario Kart. Oh, because yes. it's in the universe, <laughs> and there's not a better feeling in video games than when you're tracking down, you're in second place, and you're coming up on that leader, and you hit that question block, and you get those three red shells, you're like, oh, this is over. That's a uh, that's a lot of fun. So how great would that be in Forza, dude? That would be amazing <laughs> in Forza. You just blew my mind, Mo. That stupid uh, train would take it. I, oh God, I hated that race. <laughs> I just beat that one. All right. So for me, I'm gonna cheat then, since Donnie gave multiple answers. I'm gonna go with Batman's armor in Arkham Knight because that's just awesome, and who wouldn't want to be Batman and be able to fly? Um, but my initial first answer that popped in my head to me it was kind of a no-brainer. Like, who wouldn't want this? And I defy any of you to say this wouldn't be kind of awesome. Is have my own Pikachu. That's true. You got me there. My mech yep. would step that's... on your Pikachu and it would be gone. That would be a very mean thing to do, though. Pikachu is really fast. Like, way faster I don't, than I don't... any mech. And I don't necessarily want Pikachu as a weapon. I just want Pikachu as, like, a pet. That'd be awesome. It's like a companion, but it's smart enough to do stuff. And then... If somebody did try and beef, then I'll electroshock yeah, him. Yeah, dude, know? rains okay. lightning from the sky. I like, I like that. Yeah. So, and then sometimes he wears a luchador mask and takes on some Mexican wrestling. I moves. don't know if I've ever thought of Pikachu as a weapon, though. Hey, every Pokemon's a weapon when you think about it. I guess. Except so. Onyx, he's just a friend. 
<laughs> I thought Togepi was just a friend. Nope, just Onyx. He's the best. I finally mm-hmm. caught him, so I got excited. Is that uh, is that your Pokemon go to? Yep, that's my favorite one now because uh, he's. I've only well, seen one. Are you still playing? Yeah, I just hit level thirty, and uh, I've caught in hundred and seven. Hey, tell me about the medals update. I saw a picture the other day that somebody said it's updated and there's like medals and stuff. Like, what's mm-hmm. going on over there? So the only big thing that I've noticed is that it just shows you your medals and they look better. Um, oh, because I actually don't ever play with that part. <laughs> Here I am getting <laughs> excited. I'm like, show me this thing. <laughs> the thing that I care about is that stupid Pokedex that shows that I've caught in, uh, 100 and what am I up to? Well, I'm opening it right now so I can tell you. It's I heard that they did the um, that they revamped like gyms to make like new people more, yep. I guess, better to you know easier to capture or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you can take more into battle with you know, uh, which is good. Um, I think that yeah, was, it is that, one against one against like six is not fair at all. No. So have, they, need to do have they introduced pay to win yet? Because if I could just if I could <laughs> drop fifty bucks to just beat Mo one time to make him feel bad about how much time he's invested into it, I think I might. <coughs> Especially if it was like PayPal and it was just real easy, I could just like button click my way to beating Mo. I would just do that. I want to point out that other than the summer when I was reviewing it, I, I play about thirty minutes a day. But it's only because during my lunch, there's a Pokestop and a gym right next to the school. So I spend my lunch uh, just spinning that wheel. Yeah. Um, whatever, it just opened up. Uh, I'm up to 108 caught, but I can see 147. So huh? I'm just very excited to finally get some of those new ones. But with the mm-hmm. medals, I'm clicking on it for right now. Shows you. Oh, you actually, it says you get plus one fire type catch bonus. Oh, nice. Nice. So they did make the, they did make the medals actually worth something now instead yep. of just saying hey you got a medal nice yeah that's kind of cool i didn't even notice yeah. that so the last question we have this week is the wife question of the week as always what we try and do now uh this one is from none other than mr Lacey's wife um which also it should be noted that yesterday was their four-year anniversary so happy anniversary to the Lacey's. Aww. um my wife's name Lacey. Oh, so, oh that's right Mm, it was meant to Wait, be. There, Has yeah, like Jason's this. wife and Moe's wife ever been in two separate places at the same time documented? No. Ooh. I'm just I'm just putting that out there. Jason, we're Eskimo brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so anyway, she wants to know, if we won the lottery, what would be the first few things we would do, and would we still work? So, Donnie, why don't you go first? This is a really good question. I think I find myself asking myself this question every day when I drive to work. Um, I would definitely <laughs> not work anymore at my day job. The more entertaining question is, I've often thought, would I continue to do PSVG? Because mm. if we won the lottery, and let's just said we're millionaires, I mean, there's all kinds of things we could do with the website in terms of turning things over, and we could cover events, like, in person. I could send Mo to California and send Kevin to Comic-Con. That, that sounds really neat, but then also, if I just had millions of dollars, I don't even know if I'd want to do any of that. I'd be like, right. you know what, guys? Just keep it going, and I'm going to become one of our freelance writers, and I'm going to be at the beach. <laughs> Check in every now and again. Phone it in. Yeah, just like in the Bahamas. I mean, why not? <laughs> It just I'm gonna I'm gonna take my ball and go home now. I, I won, so <laughs> it's a it's a really interesting conversation. That's that's the best I can give you guys. So would you do would you buy anything at first though too, or like you answer the work part? But what would be the first uh, couple things you do or buy? I mean, I have a crummy house. I like my house. My wife every time I tell her we have a crummy house, she gets upset at me because this is our third <laughs> home. And it's more oh, been geez. you guys know how often I upgrade or uh, trade in <laughs> our stuff. I've more or less done the exact same thing with houses. Um, my very Does GameStop f- give you good credit for that? Yeah, they give you great credit. Okay. My very first house I bought for $60,000. And we put uh-huh. a roof on it and we painted it. And uh, it was a single floor, 1,300 square foot starter home. And it was the smallest house in a pretty good neighborhood that was full of two stories. So we were definitely like the runt on the block. You could tell that they like fit a home like in the little parcel that they could. And... Um, we sold it for 110. It was back when the market was down, and the market bounced back, and I took advantage of that. And uh, you guys know me very well, and I kind of do that a lot with almost with anything. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm tied to not selling anything that I own. <laughs> like if the price is right, I'll probably let it go if I feel like I can capitalize. 
the house that we're on now is much bigger. It's two stories. Um, the main story is exactly the same size as the old house. It's uh, or it's a little bigger. It's like 1,500 square feet. The difference between this house and the old house is that this house came with a 1,100 uh, foot square foot or 1,100 square foot basement, which is where I'm recording now, and it wasn't included on the living space. So we got a deal on it. I paid $100,000 for this house. So we like we transferred one into the other, and it paid for the move and everything. It was real easy. Like I, I, I tell Lacey and other folks that have been moving houses and thinking about putting things on the market. I remember talking to Kyle. You know, it's my very first experience selling a house was about as easy as it could be. We had a friend whose son needed a house, and he came over and he looked at our place. So, like while our dogs and when dirty laundry was everywhere, and they were like, "We'll take it. Move whenever you want." And like, we just kind of had like two months to find a place and we found a deal wow. and yeah that that was it and i had movers and everything so i went to the bank for the first house sold that one went and took the check to the movers they moved everything out we had a month to get out and everything like it was very easy um so, but now i live out in the sticks and uh, my house as i said we got a much uh, you know, bigger improvement in terms of size but we've got a really terrible kitchen it's like one it's really small it's like any uh, not to be sexist, but any, like my wife hates it. I hate it, but most any female would hate it. Um, it's really old and like a country kitchen and, you know, because we live out in the sticks, so it needs to be like completely revamped and we just have really no intention of doing it anytime soon. Outside of the basement, I mean, it's like a really good lot and it's in a pretty decent neighborhood, but it's just an old house. Like it was built in the, I think the late eighties. So like we've got cedar plank siding and it's just stuff that needs to happen to it to modernize it a bit. But, uh, I, so I think, a long long story short, I think if I had the opportunity, if I won the lottery, the very first thing I would do is I would custom design a house. And I, I would run Ethernet to every room in the house so I could plug in all of my consoles and all of my boxes. I still would not pay for cable television, I'll tell you that. I am a cord cutter <laughs> and a streamer to heart. I would still have PlayStation View just like I do, just like I have continued to do so since my PlayStation View um, I love it. I would absolutely have Roku's and game consoles on every TV in the house. I would just have better internet and infrastructure, and uh, I would just build a really nice house to have all the space and everything. I would have a dedicated gaming room for sure. Hell yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. All right, so let's hop over to Mo. What would you do if you won the lottery, and would you still work? Um, yes, I would still work. Uh, but the things I would buy is I would be buying um, a small house in a neighborhood in Orlando. Um, I really miss, uh, going to Disney world just cause you were bored. Um, my wife and I lived oh, there for, yeah. for a couple of years coaching football. And when a job offer to coach in Texas pops up, you say yes, cause Texas football is where it's at. Um, mm-hmm. I would also be buying a, a small house with a decent sized lot in Puerto Rico, um, over there, uh, right in, on the basin of the rainforest. Um, it's beautiful. There's nothing quite like it. If you've ever been, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And another small house uh, in um, County Caraway, of Ireland, um, which is where my family's from. And so I would basically spend my time uh, hopping through seasons uh, to different places just because uh, I've never been to places more beautiful than those three. And so out in Galloway um, is like the county name. Um, and it's just there's nothing like it to be out there in, in, in Ireland. And, you know, Puerto Rico is very, very beautiful. Uh, and if you've ever, you know, Disney World, there's nothing like it. So... Mine would be spent living in those places full time, and no, I wouldn't be working anymore. I would uh, maybe open up some kind of coffee shop in Orlando that made enough money to pay for my plane tickets, but that'd be about it. Nice. All right, then. And Kyle, what is your answer, sir? What would you do if you won the lottery, and would you still continue to work? Well, assuming that it was enough money where I didn't have to work, eh, it depends. I think it would depend on what I was doing. I probably wouldn't work. I need, I need, my wife and I have had this conversation. I need to preface this with I love my wife very, very much. But we've had the conversation of like her, like, do anything you want to. We had infinite money dreams. And my do anything you want to, infinite money dreams. Some of them line up, but some of them don't. So we're like, well, (laughs) would we just be roommates and stay in the same place sometime? Like, what if you wanted to go do this thing and I wanted to go do that thing? Like, how would that work? We don't have kids or anything. So (laughs) we've talked about like, we stay married if we want a lot of money because we have really different dreams like so and like i said i'm sure we would but we've had that conversation of like well if you could just go travel the world and do whatever you want would you and she's like well yeah i'm like well what if i want to go to different places she's like well i guess you'll go do that and i'm like well then what's the point i guess 
But <laughs> perfect dream. Uh, we would have small places in a couple areas. I mean, one on the East Coast, probably like in the Outer Banks or something like that. One in the mountains of Colorado. One in northern Minnesota because they had that place is just spectacular. So we'd probably have places in those areas. And honestly, if I could do whatever I want, I would live most of the time probably in a place where I could uh, start doing jujitsu again. And I would just do that for X number of hours a day. Uh, slowly work my way up to being a black belt and then maybe teach as a job. Uh, that would kind of be like the perfect dream scenario. Maybe go to Brazil for six months or nine months and train down there for a while. Like that would totally be like infinite money. Do whatever you want. Probably what I would do. Uh, so I guess if, you know, kind of doing that, I probably would have like a part-time job, like, you know, being a barista, making coffee, doing something like that, working at a game store, something like that. But, uh, a life of not a lot of responsibility, I feel like suits me, which probably doesn't say much about me as a person, but, uh, (laughs) yeah, I'd be totally down with that. That sounds great. (laughs) There you go. So for me, uh, first thing similar to Donnie is I would get a new house. Nothing necessarily, you know, super duper mansion wise but i'd want it to be you know comfortable for everybody and for my three kids uh get them in their own rooms instead of the two oldest sharing a room kind of deal little things uh but one thing that is a must simply because i just won the lottery is i will have a bat cave and it will be outfitted as a gaming room as well but it will be a bat cave i don't care what he says that's happening um Similar to Mo as well, I would also like to purchase some property in Orlando because I am also a massive Disney fan. Uh, I have not been able to live the life where I could go when I was bored, but I would absolutely love that. Just having a season ticket and living there and being able to go whenever I wanted, that is a dream. Obviously put aside some money for the kids for college and weddings and whatnot, um, but to get to the to the question of would I still work, I would still work but I would work for me as opposed to somebody else. I'm not sure if you guys or listeners are too familiar with basically uh, Adam Carolla's story. You might know Adam Carolla from like the man show and stuff back in the day. Well, he basically took a lot of the money. He had made off his projects, the man show and love line, stuff like that, and turned his passion for doing radio, which basically now is podcasting into his own network where he has basically his friends and his coworkers and his family. And they all just, have a studio and they're able to to podcast and he's turned that into money making opportunity where he's able to you know do it professionally if you will and i think after having done what we do here at psvg that's something i would love to pursue as more of a a hobby but still allowed to pay the bills using that as a hobby so that's my answer there so that wraps up the mailbag for this week and as always if you'd like to send us a question you could tweet at us at psvg that is at psvg or you can send us an email at um not at you can send us an email to podcast at place and video games.com so please continue to send in those questions but it is time as kyle alluded to earlier to move on to the main topic which this week is the psvr so kyle mentioned he got it but what mo did not mention is mo also has hands-on so we have 50 percent of the staff tonight having a hands-on experience with the playstation vr headsets so we want to get some first impressions, if you will. The launch did just happen. Um, you know, they got the control, the controllers, the the headsets strapped to their faces and the controllers and their sweaty little palms. And Donnie has a couple questions to ask of them. Is that so? This portion, I'm gonna turn it off to Donnie to run the segment and ask Coach Mo and Kyle their impressions and opinions on PSVR. So take it away, Donnie. Thank you, Kevin. I'm going to play the part of the skeptical consumer. And I want to bring up a few things because I've done my research. It's not that I don't like VR. And uh, it's something that I've been interested in for a while now because it definitely seems really cool. Before I give you any of my questions that I'd like for you guys to answer as someone who's not a diehard, who's not a day one adopter, I want to hear your first impression. So Coach Mo, let me know what it was like getting it what it was like setting it up, and what you've played so far. Um, getting it, uh, it was a little underhanded. Um, we were allowed to take it from a place that I work at, uh, and we, we paid for it. It was already paid A off. high school gymnasium? Uh, <laughs> what in no, the world? My, my second job, who will remain nameless because I don't want to throw them under the bus, um, but our district manager said we would love for someone to be able to tell customers who might buy this you know, beautiful, amazing machine um what it was like and right now we couldn't give them first-hand knowledge and so i was like well i have one pre-ordered and it's already here 
it's already paid off. What if I just take it home? And he said yes. So <laughs> I got to take my home Monday night. Uh, Lace, uh, my wife, um, she couldn't wait because I had football. So she set up by herself. Um, Lace is not a super tech savvy person. So that tells you how easy it is to set this thing up. Um, you literally, when you open it up, there's a giant booklet. Um, it's about the size of my surface and you open this thing up and it tells you step by step what to do to set it up. So she went through and did it and she dove right into Batman because that was the only reason we bought it was because she was so excited to like get to be the bat. Um, so I, Yay. <laughs> so we, I come home and I open the door and I see my wife standing in the living room with the two move controllers and her mask on. I go, <laughs> good time to mess with her, bad time to mess with her. And oh, yeah. So I don't want to start a habit in our family of messing with the person with the VR helmet because I know if I do, she's going to do something horrible to me because um, my wife is... And you, might, and you might end up punching her. Yeah, and so like to keep our marriage intact, I was like, nope, I'll just go, hey, honey, it looks like you're having fun. Uh, the cool thing is, is the TV was on, so I'm seeing what she's seeing, but not in the same clarity. Um, the TV uh, that's replaying what you see in the VR, it's a little muffled. Um, I'm not quite sure how to explain that. But for some reason, like you can see what they're seeing, but it doesn't look as good as it does in the helmet. And so she's looking around and checking all these things out, and uh, she's solving. I don't I remember what part she was in. I was like, that looks awesome. Well, she'd been doing it for like five hours. Um, and so I jumped in and I played about an hour that night. I've probably played about 15 to 20 hours. So we've gone through that Batman story mode a couple times. And I've done London Heist a couple times. I absolutely adore it. That's my favorite uh, VR game so far. Um, I've dabbled in the other ones. Uh, the demo disc is pretty fun. I'd love for some of those games to be more polished and finished. Um, I can't wait to see full releases of some of those. Um, but really, really enjoyed, uh, the London heist. I just thought it was just excellent, but again, very easy to set up. We've moved it from downstairs to upstairs. Uh, and if you are looking at a PSVR, I highly recommend you buy the power a VR charge stand. It charges one controller, both of your move controllers, and is the perfect place to set your helmet so that the cords don't get tangled up and you can easily grab it. So just want to recommend that. Thanks Mo. Um, Kyle, do you have anything to add about what it was like receiving it, opening up the package, setting it up, playing your first games? What games have you played? That kind of stuff. So pretty much, you know, to echo what Mo said, setting it up actually was surprisingly easy. I think there's kind of this, you know, you look at the box and people have kind of joked about the number of cords and everything. And there are a lot of cords in this thing. I mean, it's no joke about the amount of stuff that's in that box. But it is actually very, very easy to set up. I think it took me less than five minutes to do. It's very straightforward. The guide for it is really simple. And if you're not, you know, a looking in a book person, there's a really simple YouTube video that uh, Sony put out that makes it quite easy to follow how to do. So it works out really slick. You know, the packaging is pretty nice. It's pretty fancy. Uh, it's a nice little box. But, you know, that gets thrown, not thrown away for me. I keep all my boxes for this kind of stuff. But it's sitting in storage right now. So who cares what the box looks like in the end? But... They did a really nice job just with the design of all that, the layout of all that. Super easy to follow, super easy to kind of follow everything. The only games I've played so far have been off the demo disc. Um, I did buy a couple full games. I just haven't jumped into them yet. So kind of like I mentioned before, I played Until Dawn. I played Thumper, Super Hypercube, Headmaster, E-Valkyrie, Job Simulator, and Res Infinite. Overall, you know, they were all great. You know, they're definitely... And somebody else said this, so I can't take credit for it, but I think it is a perfect analogy for where this sits and you know i may not be as impressed with psvr if i had ever played oculus revive but i haven't played either one of those so this is a pretty solid little setup you know are the graphics as good as they po possibly could be no probably not but everything functions really well the things i've played have been really fun so in some ways you know people have equated it to it being the nintendo of vr where it's not necessarily the highest power or the best quote unquote this is the best top quality most powerful thing you're going to get but the stuff you have for it is super fun. So, and that's kind of how it feels so far is that the things I've played and the demos I had, I've had a really good time with it. The headset is super comfortable, really easy to put on. Uh, you know, my wife has had a good time messing with me and filming me while I've been playing. And I look like an absolute idiot while I'm doing it, which is great. But yeah, you know, it's it was super, getting it was easy. Setting it up was super, you know, smooth. And the experiences I, ha I have had on it so far have been really great. So, um... 
full disclosure, I've been sitting on a couple hundred dollars of GameStop trading credit, and PSVR came to my attention as a possible use for that. I am more or less allocating those funds for my NX um, whenever that's announced. But, you know, this is something that I have been interested in, so I feel like I've done my homework, so I want to present some questions to you um, from somebody who's skeptical, because that's exactly where I am with VR. I'm skeptical on it. You know, Colin Moriarty, Kyle, has been saying that it's, you know, it's a new way to play games. I, I, I first don't, dis- I don't agree, because it feels like it's motion gaming. It feels like without motion gaming, there would be no PSVR. It feels like the headset is more or less like a move or a Wiimote that's just on your face. And as you move it around, you know, like, yeah, your vision moves, but it is more or less motion gaming. If if I took that stance, what would your reply be? Man, uh, I think you're, <laughs> the easiest thing I could... Man, so I was always really skeptical of the argument that you can't understand until you try it. But now that I've done it, you can't understand until you try it. There, just equating it to motion gaming is not, it's not an equitable to me uh, comparison because you're right. You're putting this headset on and a lot of the things you're doing are with your hands, but the level of immersion and, and how you feel with that headset on is unlike anything you'll get in any other game you play. Now, does that mean that it's for everyone? No, it doesn't. But I think that just saying like, oh, it's like, you know, similar to the innovation of like motion gaming, I think is completely falling short of the mark. Because there's so- this is something different. This is a different way to play games, even from what motion gaming was and the immersion that you have, the way you feel while you're sitting in that atmosphere, just kind of how everything moves around you. Because like it or not, whether it's good or it's bad, motion gaming didn't make anyone throw up. You know, like it's not. So I think that's not a parallel comparison. It is something different. It is a different way to play games. Now, is this the next step? Is this what every game is going to be in the future? We'll see. I mean, if you look at Vive and Oculus, the number of releases they have had has definitely diminished. Sony has a very strong lineup from now until the end of the year and maybe into early next year. But what are things going to look like in March, April, May, June, July? That's going to be a really good question. So I think that, you know, there's definite possibilities and there this definitely presents an opportunity to do things in a different way and to really truly change the way we play games whether or not we'll be able to capitalize on that or whether this iteration of the soft hardware is what can capitalize on it is is really remains to be seen okay thank you for that coach mo uh kyle discussed a few things here he discussed the game lineup which we're going to get to next but he also discussed how this is an immersive feeling and that's where i want to go next with this I'm interested to know how you feel like, or your descriptions and and reactions to, to the hardware itself. How does it feel? I've only demoed the unit. I demoed the unit at Best Buy. I've only played one experience. I've only had like 15 minutes with the unit. So I want to hear from you. How does it fit? Um, does it make you tired to play? Do you feel like you're limited because there's cords? Um, do the screens get dirty? Like I have glasses, and when I put the helmet on, just personally, in that one... 15 minute demo that I had like my my glasses got foggy not the screens themselves but my glasses got foggy um because I had the headset around my glasses and kind of like around my nose um I don't know if like if if I had the ability to adjust it myself if that could be fixed um so from the unit itself uh from a physical standpoint what are reactions and if you would like to please jump on that last point I'd be happy to hear it okay um, to, to jump on the last point, I was going to say comparing this to motion gaming would be like comparing putt-putt golf to playing at Augusta. This is the very best that motion gaming has ever been. And so I don't like, like when I hear motion gaming, I'm thinking of the Wii. No, this blows the Wii out of the water. The Wii is putt-putt golf. It's where you're that mom and grop shop. This is Augusta. This is the top of the line in my opinion again i haven't tried the other vr systems okay it, uh, it just incredible. just to just to provide a rebuttal kind of where i was coming from that statement when right. the when the we was announced it was the augusta at the time of a new immersive experience and way to play and so, now it's putt putt <laughs> There you go. And and that's what we, and that's, and there's what, and that's what we would expect. You know, like when Mm -hmm. Kinect came out, it made Wii look like Putt Putt. And now that Mm -hmm. VR is out, it makes Kinect look like Putt Putt. Yeah. Um, I, that's more or less kind of where I wanted to come from, from a 
a very innovative and a very, you know, low level look at it. And, you know, if I'm the skeptic consumer, I'm looking at it and I'm wondering, to, I, I want to know from both of you, is this just the next Wii Sports or is this the next Connect, or is this something that's going to last longer? So I, I appreciated yep. hearing both of those thoughts from you. Yep. Um, but I, I'm interested yep. in hearing how this headset behaves. So I was really nervous about the headset. Um, again, I'm 6'7". I'm a very large man. Um, I was really nervous that this was going to be a $600 buy-in for something that would only be for my wife. Uh, we got the one with the extra controllers and all the games and the sweet uh, camera, which is actually way better than the old one. And so we were very excited. And I was like, oh, it fits great. If it doesn't, then I'm going to watch Lacey play it a lot. I popped it right on. Very, very comfortable. I had no issue putting it on. The only issue I've had with the screen uh, was after a three-hour gaming session doing Batman, uh, I was sweaty because I like to play without the fan on. Just because then, because I have to play with the headphones in. <laughs> and I'm very tall. And if the fan's on and I hit that, it's going to not only break the controller, but I'm going to break my hand. <laughs> So. See the first th- the first thing I thought of Mo when you said like I was playing Batman and I was sweaty was that scene in Step Brothers <laughs> when he walks he's like why are you all sweaty it's watching cops <laughs> but no I just uh, it was one of those things where, like I was very worried about it but I had like they got a little little sweaty but it was fine um, it didn't actually prohibit me from playing it still when I'm looking on the, the Batcave I'm like oh my goodness I'm checking every nook and cranny I'm looking up down around turning and. and it's beautiful, and so I had no problems that way. Uh, the cord is a very good length because even with my height, I'm moving around the room, and I'm not restricted. I'm able to do all these things that they want you to do in those games. Um, so I've had no problem that part. Um, again, I'm going to stress this Powerade holder is amazing. Um, we're not sponsored by Powerade, but Powerade, you might want to hook us up uh, because putting it away is super easy. Like It takes me like no time. Kyle, do you have anything to add to the headset itself and how it how it fits and all of those questions I had? I will echo first most statements on the Power Rail holder. I have one as well, and it is fantastic. Definitely, definitely recommend it. Uh, as far as the headset goes, I am not as tall as Mo is, but I have a really big head. I have a rather large melon. So I was a bit worried about this thing because, like, finding fitted baseball caps and all that stuff is a challenge for me. Uh, but this thing fit great. It was super comfortable. It took, you know when you put it on and you're it walks you through a setup of it that took us like when i first put it on it took a second because things were really blurry and i was like oh crap this is really gonna suck but then after you get everything adjusted in and you kind of just get a feeling for where it needs to sit on your head from that point forward moving you know when you put it on super comfortable easy to use never got tired my like i was a little bit worried because we've had the conversation and like in our chat and stuff about you know am i worried about like eye issues or anything like that because you know what, what are the long-term ramifications of having a screen that close to your eyes all the time um i've had really no eye fatigue i haven't been like more tired when playing now granted the longest time i've ever played it has been for about two hours but i haven't had any issues so i didn't feel more tired when i was done or anything like that so as far as comfort goes ease of setup all that stuff it's super great Kyle, you kind of mentioned on the game lineups, and I've been following these really closely. Uh, Res and Super Hypercube, two and first and foremost, really caught my attention. Like I was like, these games look amazing. These look like killer apps. Um, since the release of the headset, I've also been made aware of Battlezone and VR worlds, especially that whole head pong thing that they got going on. That looks really cool. Um, I've read several Batman VR reviews, and the one thing that I've heard about it a lot that I really don't like hearing as the skeptic consumer to VR is that Batman is more or less an experience that you can kind of finish in about an hour or an hour and a half. Both of you have bought into this technology day one. I want to hear what you think about the game lineup, what you've played, what you think about the initial launch lineup, and what you're looking forward to. Um, Batman was all we were looking forward to. Um, this was a big buy-in for Lace. Uh, she was very excited to get to be the bat. Um, I wish there was more to it, um, but we've, I, I really think that either one of us could write an extensive review on that game already. Um, and we've had a lot of fun with it, but that was the one we're looking forward to. Uh, I've dumped, I've jumped into the demo a little bit just to try some of the stuff out. Um, and then I jumped in and did that London Heist one is probably my favorite one so far. I, I like it better than the Batman one, but. If Lacey hears that, uh, I'll sleep on the couch for a long, long time. I don't know what's coming next that we're excited for. This was just something that we had some extra money. We said, let's go for it and try it out. 
Uh, and I'm actually going to try to do some weird things with it. I'm going to try to play Overwatch with my mask on and see what happens. I'm going to try to just goof off with it and see what what ways I can stretch and try it out. Um, but right now, yeah, the the London Heights is... I don't, I don't really see anything in the future that's coming out that I say I have to buy in VR because these experiences are, are perfect for us. It's something we can dive in and share with friends or we can play our own. So. Hey, Mo, how often do you play Overwatch still? A lot. Who do you main? Uh, I'm normally D.Va because okay. I'm pretty good with her. Gosh, one more reason that Mo and I are kindred spirits. I also main D.Va all the time. Okay, so to, back to Donnie's question. <laughs> uh so the games I've played, like I mentioned before, you know, uh, Until Dawn Rush of Blood is exactly what I thought it was going to be in the sense that it is not a, it is like playing a light game from when I was a kid in the arcade. It's, it's a, it, it's nothing more than that. And I didn't expect it to be anything more than that. So I, I've enjoyed my time with it. It's not fantastic. It's not great, but it is fun. Thumper, that game is pretty stellar, and I have the full thing downloaded. I just haven't jumped into it. The demo on the disc is the first level or the first series of levels. That game is absolutely incredible, and I'm sure it's probably really, really good just on regular PS4 because you can play it that way as well. But in VR, that is something special. That game is fantastic. I highly recommend that one. Super Hypercube was great. Really enjoyed it. Pretty much what I thought it was. Uh, Headmaster surprised me. It was actually way more fun than I thought it was going to be because all you're doing is heading a soccer ball into the net around like goalies and other objects and things. So I didn't really think it was going to be all that great, but I really had a lot of fun with it. So that was pretty fun. Uh, How different is that experience than if, if you played it? than the Connect like sports soccer experience. So I never played the Connect sports soccer experiences. I did play some of the other Connect games though. Uh, you know, and I think it's just a lot more precise. I think is the easiest thing I can say that when I would play the Connect games in the past, I sometimes would like do stuff and things wouldn't react the way that I wanted them to or things wouldn't happen exactly like I expected them to. Just from like a headmaster perspective, everything always went how I expected it was going to go. There was never a situation where I was like, "Oh, um, I really thought that ball was going to go that way and it went way over the other direction. You know, now that doesn't mean I always hit it, you know, my targets exactly the way I wanted to, but every time I made contact, I was like, Oh, I was too early. Oh, I was too late. I knew that the result of what happened was because of my bad, not because I ever had any doubt in the equipment, if that makes sense. So that was kind of my thought on that. E Valkyrie, the demo for that is super short, so I don't have a lot of thoughts on it. It seems pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure about it though because like the demo was only like five minutes so that was very very short <laughs> job simulator was just stupid fun uh, it's like i'm trying to make coffee and turn on my computer and i'm throwing like donuts at people i don't know it was just a really weird fun game i don't know necessarily if i yeah i don't know <laughs> it was just stupid fun that was the game that when i was um playing it my wife was filming me playing it and laughing at me hysterically because i was like my dog was getting in the way because I was, like, reaching down and trying to do stuff. And my dog was, like, <laughs> licking my hand and trying to play with the move controller and stuff. It was, yeah, it was bad news. Um, and then Res Infinite was actually really great as well. Um, I had never played the original Res, but Res Infinite um, was pretty spectacular and just being able to kind of, you know, more or less aim with, like, where you're looking at. And that game felt super smooth. It, it was really, really a cool experience. So from a launch lineup perspective, you know, like I said, um, Thumper and Until Dawn Rush of Blood, I have the full games for. Um, also, I haven't had a chance to play Playroom VR yet, which is free. You can just download it from the PlayStation Store. I downloaded it, but I haven't had a chance to play it yet. You know, and then when you look at everything else, it's a pretty good launch lineup, realistically, if you know what you're getting into. And I think that's the big thing to keep in mind is that none of these games, you know, I haven't played Rigs or any of those other games that they've pushed a lot yet, but none of these games are really the full their experiences you know they're not necessarily the full-blown games that we'd expect and i don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because they're still trying to kind of figure things out so i think if you know what you're getting into and you know what to expect of it i'm very very happy with what i've played so far now looking to the future um uh robinson the journey just got a release date i think of november 8th so i'm really expect excited about that Gollum has a release date or doesn't have a release date but is expected q1 of 2017 that's another game i'm really looking forward to uh there's about i think 30 or so experiences you can have on psvr right now that's supposed to bump up to 50 by the end of the year so from a launch perspective you know i have plenty of things that i will be playing 
VR between now and the end of December. I, I am more than I am not worried about the extent of things I can play at the end of this year for this year. I do think, like I said, moving forward is where the question will come in because I think even, you know, when you look at the other headsets that are out there, there's definitely been a drop off as far as the number of games go. And I think that's potentially worrying. You know, we'll see if Sony holds to them saying, you know, this is phase one, this is the PlayStation one, that they really are going to continue to push it and support it. So hopefully that does happen. But like I said, if you know what you're getting into and you're not expecting 20 hour experiences, but you're expecting you know, everything to last 90 minutes to two hours and you recognize that because things are 10, 15 and $20 for the most part, uh, you know, I think you're going to be a happy consumer. But if you jumped into this expecting to play, you know, Uncharted 4 completely in VR and have that experience, you definitely would be disappointed. Hey, Kyle, quick question. So you know how much I like uh, Until Dawn. Does the VR have anything to do with the original story? Are they just using that name to, to promote something else. So different. there's a few tie-ins to the original game, but if you didn't know them, you wouldn't miss anything, if that makes sense. So if you okay. know it... So it's just inside, inside yeah, things, basically. Yeah, so if you know the game and you enjoyed Until Dawn, you would recognize some stuff that's going on there, but if you're not, you're not... I mean, if you don't know anything about it, you're going to be like, okay, this is cool, it's a roller coaster thing, and that's all it's going to mean to you. Gotcha. Okay, back to you, Donnie. Um... I want to have I want to have both of you address some of the cons that I've seen brought up in reactions and reviews from this thing hitting the market, and the first and foremost I want to have you guys address the visuals. Um, I know a lot of the games have been described as visually not on par with PS4, um, looking kind of um, outdated, um, and then the field of view uh, for the camera and the motion tracking. Uh, I've noticed in a lot of reactions and streaming videos, items that were being picked up in the games um, tended to like just, it just kind of vibrated or shaked like on screen. Uh, I wanted to have you guys speak to that and see if you experienced any of that and if it kind of broke the immersion of the headset itself. Um, and also, I've heard that a lot of people suggest that if you um, if you turn off the lights in your room, that it improves the experience. I wanted to have either of you touch on any of those topics, uh, Kyle. So I will say I have not had any of like the shaking issues or any of the issues with the um, camera not like picking up my movements. The only issue I've really had is actually based on the space that I have. Playing Job Simulator was actually very, very challenging because I couldn't, it was really hard for me to get far enough away from my camera so that I could reach down far enough to do stuff without hitting my couch. So that was actually really the only problem that I've had is that I just didn't have a space that was big enough just because of the way our, our living room is set up that I could like navigate that space okay. But as far as you know, not having the camera pick up my movements or the, the shaking that some people were seeing, I haven't had that happen in anything that I've played. As far as the visuals go, yes, the visuals are not as good as the PS4, but they can't be. There's no way that they would be able to. There is a little small screen door effect on everything. So it potentially looks like you can maybe kind of like you're looking through like a screen door for a couple things, but it's not very pronounced. And I really forgot about it. The only time I really actually notice it when I'm playing a game is if something goes completely to black, because it's not totally dark. It's kind of like a off blackish gray background. And then I can see that screen door effect a little bit. But outside of that, I haven't really had any issues with the visuals because I just kind of went into it knowing it's not going to be on par with what the PS4 is pushing for a normal game. So I really haven't had any issues there. Again, not saying those aren't happening for other people. I just haven't experienced those issues. So, you know, I, maybe I've been fortunate. Maybe I've been lucky. Maybe in the future I will. Um, I can agree with the darkness thing. When I tried to play this afternoon, uh, it definitely was not as... Um, the experience wasn't quite as good, I should say, probably, as when it's completely dark in the room. Uh, and just and I don't know, for me, it's because I'm very backlit um, of how our house is set up when I'm playing in the afternoon because all the sun comes in from the behind me. But it never was a situation where things weren't responding on the screen the way that I would. It's just that I could see right next to um, the headset, there was just a little bit of, of light that was coming in. Whereas when I played you know, in the morning or in the evening when I played, I just didn't notice those things. I, I really, the light wasn't very pronounced there, or I didn't notice any light there at all. So from a gameplay perspective, it didn't affect anything, but a little bit from an immersion perspective right around my eyes when it was really bright in the room, it was a little bit harder. But outside of that, my experience has been really positive. I haven't gotten motion sick in anything. I know that was one thing that people have said that this headset compared to other headsets, people have gotten motion sick more often. I've gotten motion sick in nothing. 
I was a little worried about that because I actually don't get motion sick on rides, but I do occasionally in um, IMAX movies. But I've had zero issues with that at all so far. Doesn't not saying it won't happen in the future, but I haven't had any issues yet with that. Thanks, uh, Coach Mo. You got anything to add? Um, I I have also haven't had the experience where like things were being glitchy. Um, I don't want to spoil these games for people who are going to play it. Uh, but there's a scene where in the Batman, um, where you're sitting on a piano and someone comes in and talks to you, but I'm over here picking up sheet music and setting it down and moving it around. I'm picking up a picture of uh, Bruce and his family, and I'm I'm like grabbing these things and looking at them, and then just setting them back down. Um, and some places when you set them down, it'll stay, and in some places it'll like dissolve and go back to where it was. Um, but I thought that was just really cool that it. It was just so seamless that I could pick up the sheet music and look at it. Um, and I wasn't having issues like anything bugging out and getting weird. I didn't try the lights off thing, um, but I, I also haven't experienced the light coming in part. The seal seems to be pretty good. Maybe it's just um, the way it's sitting on my head um, has been pretty good. Uh, but again, yeah, I, I've really enjoyed everything that I've seen so far. And, and anybody who's having a problems with graphics... Um, I just don't know how you can complain when you're able to stand on top of a building and see the street below you and see all these things going on and then look up into the sky and see clouds moving. I thought it was a, an amazing experience, and it's one that I'm so glad that I got to have. You actually touched on my very next topic, and that was the immersion experience because, I mean, that's what VR sells. And um, I'm glad you brought up the experience that you had with Batman because I've been seeing a lot of reactions where people are saying, you know, I tried to pick up this item or I tried to uh, dodge, you know, this thing that was coming at me to try and uh, either break the game or to see if it was, you know, if it allowed for free movement. And uh, a lot of people said, you know, like if you did something that the game didn't expect you to do, like it more or less did nothing to the game, which makes sense. So I wanted to ask you if if you experienced any of those moments inside the games that broke the immersion and or if the move controller specifically made anything feel like that um as i understand it you you can get two move controllers with the the launch bundle neither of those mo those move controllers have the um the joystick or the d-pad they are just the x y square um was it x squared triangle circle sorry i play so many controllers <laughs> um so you can only really do actions and then uh, motion controls. So I wanted to ask you if you had any of those immersion breaking moments and specifically, how do you move? Like if you're playing with these move controllers or more or less, are you playing with these move controllers? And in those games, can you move in the game freely or are you just kind of on rails and then the motion of the headset kind of dictates your point of view? Um, in Batman, uh, I want to say, I guess you're on rails um, to a point. Uh, so you're turning your head and you can see the whole room, but then to go to like to turn around, you push a certain button on the controller and you'll do in 180, and then you click the action button that takes you to a different part of the room or a different part of the building or wherever you're going, um, and then there you can look around and move around. So it's not like you walk the the Wayne Manor or you're walking the Batcave. It's more like you're jumping to a spot and then searching and moving around there and then jumping to another spot uh, i guess would be the way that i would word it yeah i haven't had any immersion breaking any like i said and maybe <laughs> i know i'm like with the playstation guys so he's probably like oh he's just you know covering the stuff i just really haven't had anything bad happen i think playing thumper like <laughs> my wife was standing next to me asking me a question and i was i was totally not even recognizing the fact that she existed like when I, when I was playing Thumper, you can see, like, where the track goes off to. And I'm, like, turning my head, like, following this track, like, going off, like, forever into the distance. Like, it was really sweet. But, yeah, I think one of the things with, with those controllers is that, you know, and in VR in general, the act of walking is one of the things that in any VR situation, other than Vive, when you're doing full room scale, that you yourself are physically walking. Uh, walking makes people throw up, period. Whether it's on Oculus, whether it's on PSVR, walking usually equals puking. So you typically don't do that. You warp, like you move from here to there, or you warp from place to place. So you kind of point at where you want to go, and you can warp to that place. From my understanding, I haven't played it yet, but um, in the Tomb Raider part that's PSVR compatible, they kind of have two options. There's the comfortable option where it has you warping, or you have the you know the free range or the extreme option, which is literally you're kind of walking as a character, and that makes people not feel good because you're not physically walking yourself. So. You know, other than, like I said, Vive, when you are have that room scale and you are the one physically walking around, 
you know, it's really hard to do. That's one of the things that VR is going to have to get around and, and figure out how do you move in these games and make those things happen because most people can't dedicate a huge space to walking around their house while they're playing video games. So, uh, but yeah, for the most part, like I said, I haven't had any issues. I haven't, you know, the the warping that has happened has made sense and, and I kind of knew that was what was going to happen. So I haven't like been disappointed in it or I haven't found it, you know, breaking the immersion in any way, shape or form because I kind of knew that what was going to happen. Thank you. So as the skeptical gamer, I'm going to give you my closing thoughts. I'll let you respond to both of them. We'll give it back to Kevin. First and foremost, the the cables look like a nightmare. You've got a processing box that got cables to the TV and the cables to the PS4 and the cables to the to the headset, and then you've got the move controllers, and it's like you, you really need to have a lot of USB ports and stuff to keep everything charged. So I'm glad that both of you have the charging station that you've mentioned that. I think it's really important. Uh, more so... It almost feels like a beta product. Like there's not like a, a game with some longevity that can like really get you like this is why you need to have it, a killer app if you will. It seems like a lot to spend. So in close, I wanted to ask you both, now that you've had it and you're day one adopters, and I understand that you guys are diehards and you want to get in day one, just like I will with any, you know, probably Nintendo hardware or anything like that. I wanted to ask you, let's say you have a thousand dollars that you dedicate to gaming a year. Would you recommend that that person spend half of that gaming budget on getting PSVR? Oh, man. That's a really hard question, honestly. And my answer is a giant maybe. If they know what they're getting into and it excites them, yes. If you have doubt or if you are not certain this is for you or if you are really hesitant about you know what the experiences have to offer it's hard for me to say yes jump in today now with that being said i think it's absolutely spectacular i'm really happy i have one i'm going to be checking out as many things as i can on it because this really truly for the first time in a long time i feel like i'm doing something different when i'm playing a video game or experience and i feel like in some ways i feel like i'm experiencing something differently than i ever have before but you're right you know right now is it the best idea to jump in. I think for the the price point, if you already have a PS4 and you're interested and think that there could be some cool stuff for you and you know what you're getting into, you recognize that it's not 12, 20, 30 hour games. I think I would say, yeah, you know, try one out if you can before you buy. But if you, if you go in knowing that, like I never tried it before I bought it, I'm super happy with it. But if you're at all skeptical, it's really hard for me to push you to do it if you haven't tried it yet because the future is still very unknown. Um, you know, in five years, will this be this cool relic that I have? Maybe. But honestly, I even at this point, I'd be okay with that. Just with what I have I have to play now, with what I know for sure is coming in the future, I'd be okay with saying, hey, I had this cool experience. Hopefully it continues to grow. But if not, I'm cool with it. Coach Mo, I'm going to give you the same question. I want to re- reiterate to you. You're somebody that has $1,000 to spend on gaming a year for any number of consoles, would you recommend that somebody or at this time spend half of that on adopting PlayStation VR? If you only have a PlayStation 4, yes. If you have the other three systems, no. Um, and my reason for saying that, no no offense to Sony, I, I own two PlayStation 4s. I play all their exclusives. But right now, the Horizon, get it? The Horizon? <laughs> <laughs> It's not super bright, and if you just have a PS4, a PSVR is going to give you a lot of bang for your buck. Um, you're going to spend that 500 bucks, but yeah, you're going to have hundreds of hours of gameplay with friends, with family, even by yourself. Um, like people have alluded to, the Batman game is very short, yet I've probably spent nine hours in it already, just redoing things and trying different things and goofing off, having a good time. But if you have the three systems, the exclusives that are going to come on the Wii U, they are the PS4, the ones they are going to get, and the Xbox One, no, spend your thousand dollars there. Play more games because you're going to get more enjoyment out of that than you are out of this when you have those other three consoles as outlets, and that would be that would be my opinion. All right, well, those are my uh, questions that I had from reading a bunch of reactions and reviews as the skeptical gamer. Kevin, back to you, buddy. Thank you, sir. Very interesting indeed. I was also not very interested in the PSVR, and you at least have me raising my eyebrows now, guys. So thanks for that, and it's good to know all the listeners, I'm sure, are eager to hear our thoughts as well, so thank you. But now it's time to move on to the news of the week. 
This week in Play Some Video Game News. So since we've heard from Donnie for a while now, let's throw it to Kyle first. What do you have for news stories this so week? So it looks like possibly Mass Effect Andromeda's release, release date has been leaked. So an art book for the game made by Dark Horse Comics was listed on Amazon. And in their little briefing for it, it said it's releasing simultaneously with the game. And that book had a release date of March 21st, 2017, which fits perfectly as EA said that this game was going to release in their fifth, uh, their fourth fiscal quarter, which would be summertime January to March. So we'll see if that date holds. But right now it's looking like Mass Effect Andromeda might be duking it out with the NX, you know, if they ever decide to tell us when the NX is coming out. <laughs> you have anything else on, on the news oh, list sure. there, Kyle? I'll bust through my other couple then here really quick. Yeah, go so, for it. The uh, Friday the 13th game has been delayed to 2017. If you don't know, this was a game that was a Kickstarter. Um, however, it will be adding a single player portion to it, though not necessarily okay. for free. So if you back the game on Kickstarter or already pre-ordered it, you will get the single player portion for no extra charge. However, anyone who pre-orders at this point um, will now have to pay an increased price, which is $40 for digital and 60 for physical, I believe. Uh, there... Was there any mention hmm. for VR support? Because when I first saw that, I kind of thought that maybe that would be included. Uh, I don't believe there was any mention of that in their information that was presented about it. Yeah, I, di I didn't hear anything about that either. So, uh, the multiplayer is now slated for spring 2017 and the single player portion coming later, summer 2017. But if you are a backer, you will get access to a beta still happening this fall. So if you haven't heard about this game, it's kind of cool. It's a one versus many game. Obviously, one person plays Jason, everyone else plays camp counselors. However, the big thing to know is that not every camp counselor might necessarily win. So you might have Jason win on his own. You might have all the camp counselors win. Maybe only three of them win because it, you can either kill Jason or escape. So if either of those things happen, you quote unquote win. So it's possible if you're the only counselor who escapes, you win and Jason killed everyone else. So that's definitely a possibility. So kind of an interesting game. I definitely recommend you ch check it out if you have any interest in horror games or Friday the 13th. It's kind of trying to do some cool things. Um, trying to do some asymmetrical gameplay a little different than maybe games like Evolve have. And then finally, because we've talked about it so much this podcast, Overwatch's Halloween update is now available. There's, a, yeah. <laughs> there's about 100 new unlocks, including some really awesome skins if you haven't checked them out. There's also a new PvE experience where you team up with three other players to take on waves of shambling Zomnix in Junkstein's Revenge, a new brawl that's existing. It's the first PvE thing they've really done. So if you haven't dusted off Overwatch in a while, shame on you, but it is a great time to jump back in and have fun with all of us who've been playing it regularly. Awesome. And that was Kyle with the news headline. So now we go to Coach Mo with sports. Take it away, Coach. <laughs> Actually, not sports related today. Darn it. I mean, Madden um, has new updates. But no, uh, so my one's going to be the, there's going to be now an upcoming Steam update that will expand the PlayStation 4 controller support. Um, I'm really jacked about this because I'm really hoping it will work on my Steam machine. Um, only because I don't like the Steam Machine and the little thumb pads that aren't thumb pads. They're, they're driving me nuts and they make gaming harder. Um, and the other one that I wanted to notice, I, just, I feel like somebody should say it uh, for the Xbox Empire, but on the recent uh, MPD, the Xbox One's continue its streak of being the best-selling console. It is. That mm. is true. Oh, you failed to mention the best part of that <laughs> MPD, though. Did you hear the best part of that? <laughs> that the PS3 outsold the Wii U in the month of September. <laughs> no, yeah, it absolutely did. Okay, I, I have, okay, I have no defense on the <laughs> Wii U part, but Mo, the only reason that Xbox is out selling <laughs> PS4 now, there's, there's actually two reasons. Number one is everybody already had a PS4, so they needed something to buy, wah, and the wah. second one. It's because Donnie has bought like 15 <laughs> Xbox One in the last month or so. So with that, let's throw it to Donnie for the weather. All right. So for those uh, looking for hope, Macquarie apparently has outed that the Nintendo NX will be revealed next week. This is a longstanding rumor, but this is a stock investment company that provides updates to their consumers. So there's really no market tie-in or anything that would say that. So... By the time you're hearing this, that means this week, as in the next Monday through Friday. So uh, if it happens, then they'll be true. And if not, then it'll be a long-standing uh, add to the pile of people that were incorrect. 
The other news that I had was that apparently Oceanhorn, the game that Kyle reviewed, is coming not only to PlayStation Vita, but also to, quote, a Nintendo platform. Nobody knows what that means. So it could be an an ex-launch title sometime next year. It could be a Wii U title this fall. It could be a 3DS title this fall. Um, While I want to say and hope that that means that it's coming to 3DS, I think it's probably more likely it's coming to Wii U, considering how indie games from PS4 and Xbox One uh, can jump to Wii U so easily. Yeah. So, Either way, uh, if it does come to Nintendo platform, that's where I'll play it. All right, so it's time to wrap it up, boys and girls. But before we do, we want to let you know what's going on that you should probably check out. So, Kyle, you got any plugs? Uh, just you know, head over to the website, playsomevideogames.com. I am sure I will be posting some stuff on there about... You know, maybe something about Tomb Raider, unless someone else does. And probably some stuff about PSVR. Maybe Mo and I will work on something with that. But yeah, check it out. We enjoy when you come visit us. Go check out Mo's new weekly Xbox update. Super happy to have him be my counterpart as he, you know, lets the Xbox Empire know what's happening as I let the PSN folks know what's going on there. And feel free to be my friend on PSN or follow me on Twitter at PsychoCross, C-Y-C-O-C-R-O-S-S. Perfect. And Coach Mo, anything you'd like to plug, sir? Well, I'm working on a bunch of stuff, but because of the whole coaching thing, it's all just sitting there like half written or half done and recorded. Uh, my goal is to do something. Um, I, I have some games that I'd like to give away, so please keep listening and checking the Twitter. Oh, and now I'm actually posting stuff on Twitter, so expect there to be more codes and fun things. And I've got a lot of Gears of War swag I can send out. So if you're looking for some uh, sweet Gears of War stuff... Let me know, because uh, we have some. I've got like a hundred of those cards. But other than that, uh, well. just, I'm so glad to get to be on the podcast. I miss you guys so much. and I just miss goofing off with you. Thank you, guys. Uh, I love Ab- you all. Absolutely, sir. We miss you, and that's for sure. So, Donnie, anything you'd like to plug before we close up shop? Um, first, I want to plug Married to the Games, and especially Tim Router. He's going through some stuff with his wife. He provided a very nice and welcomed update on Twitter today, which made me feel really happy, and I just wanted to reach out to him, let him know. Thoughts and prayers going out to those guys. Everybody make sure you're downloading their podcast and checking them out as well. Um, over to our site, as Kyle or as Kevin mentioned to you earlier in the episode, we've added a bunch of new writers, and I'm just so grateful and appreciative of everybody that wanted to join the cause and make our website better, and I hope you guys are all enjoying it. So please come check it out, provide feedback, comment, um, we, we stalk the website all day. We want to talk to you. We want to debate. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to disagree with you and all that jazz. So definitely come check it out and uh, just interact with us. Absolutely. And I, I'd like to thank everybody for giving us the opportunity to be so big that we had to reach out and get new members as well. So things are going amazingly, and it's uh, it's hard to believe we've been doing it for less than a year. But uh, we got the opportunities going our way, so we wanted to spread the wealth and expand the team. So... Uh, as Kyle said, make sure to check out that website, playsomevideogames.com. You can find us on Twitter at PSVG. Like us on Facebook if you haven't already. And also make sure you share with your friends and invite them to also like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash playsomevideogames. We have our Twitch and YouTube channels linked up on the site as well. Um, most recently, let's see for reviews, we have Dead Synchronicity that was reviewed by Seth. Uh, but Coach Mo was kind enough to jump in and pinch hit for him on the audio for the review done quick so make sure to check that out uh and josh last week also uh reviewed castles on xbox one and we have an initial impressions on mafia 3 by rob another newbie to the team so make sure to hit up that website and see what we have going on it is constantly changing and will continue to do so because we can't stop won't stop never stop ain't gonna quit and we'll keep on playing those video games Because we'll always game. And we'd like to remind you, boys and girls, to never stop gaming. Thank you for listening to Play Some Video Games, the official podcast.